Okay, so here we go with um, experimental um, finger rest, le left one finger rest um, support, tube fattener, whatever you want to call it, um, for metal flute. Uh, Mark II, uh, prototype Mark II. Um, and I'm still going to be using this um, American water plumbing pipe. Um, it's a very hard PVC, so, um, and it's, I think, a nominal one-inch pipe, um, Schedule 40 American Standards, and its interior diameter, conveniently, is just under 20 millimeters, um, if, ah, if you can see that. 19.8, just under 20 mil, uh, which is much the same as the external diameter of, of the average metal boom flute tube. I've also got a, a handy piece of steel tube here, which is approximately the same external diameter as, as the flute tube. That's 19.86 mil external diameter. That's going to come in useful for any forming or anything that we need to do with the, the PVC tube. So that's what I'm working on. Um, I've marked out on the tube 30 millimeters, three centimeters, and I'm going to saw it off at that with a hacksaw. Um, get away with a junior hacksaw but uh, I'm just going to use an, or an ordinary hacksaw and put it in the vise and I'm just going to saw that off which I don't really need to show anybody how to do. This process only uses ordinary hand tools, nothing exotic as you will see. Okay, so here's my sawn off segment and I've popped it back in the vise and just used this file. Yeah, it's a, just an ordinary metal file, multi-purpose metal file. It's fairly coarse grained. Um, it's a pound shop thing, not, nothing, not an expensive tool, um, but perfectly serviceable. And I've just used that to file the saw marks away and get the end flat and smooth. I did it in the vise and did it like that. Um, and so I've now got a, a reasonably clean end. And... I'm going to pop, I've actually already marked this because the camera went off, but I'll just show you how I did it. I'm going to pop it in the vise like that. And I'm going to use, instead of trying, it's useless trying to use a flat ruler to rule a, a straight line along a curved surface. So what you do, this is a, a piece of aluminium um, corner molding. Um, V section, obviously, or L section, uh, 45 degree angle. You just use that as a ruler. You just press it steadily against your tube and use your pencil and mark it. So I've marked it in two places because what I need to do is cut away a smaller segment to leave a larger one um, that, that's going to basically be the spring clip and the finger rest itself so that it will just clip over the flute body. But what I've got to do is get it the right size and because I haven't got the Mark 1 prototype here to see <laughs> what width I ended up with the jaws of that I've just got to have a, a bit of a think about it exactly how wide I'm going to make that. Okay and having decided that I've got roughly the right size I hope here um, I'm going to put it in the vise with my marks just level with the jaws or just a little bit above the jaws of the vise where they meet on the inner diameter rather than the outer one. They're just guidelines. I'm going to do this a bit differently than I did the first one. The first one, I made my marks and I took the saw and I cut it this way in the vise, cut them perpendicularly to the uh, axis of the, of the tube. This one I'm going to do differently. I'm, I'm going to do, because found when we put it on the flute we actually needed to have chamfered edges so that if the clip twisted 
they were too low to interfere with the keys when the keys were closed. Now, hopefully we have it on the flute away from the keys, but if it does get close to, to one of the tone hole chimneys, it needs to be lower than the um, than where the key is, the pad surface is when it's depressed. So I'm going to save time. This time I had to file off the angles. This time I'm going to cut it this way and get chamfers automatically. So I'm just going to cheat and use the jaws of the, the surface of the jaws of the vise as my guide for sawing. So again, I'm not going to show you while I do that. I'm going to do it. So here is the result of my sawing. I haven't cleaned it up or anything. There's still all the, the burr on it from, from the saw, but that will just, most of it can just brush away with a finger, but I'll file that clean. That piece is waste for something else and it looks like I've got it about right because when I use my flute substitute tube you can see the shape and that's just going to clip on there quite nicely. Can't unclip it easily at the moment but again that's just I've got the jaws about right which is pleasing. So what I now have to do is just use the file again to clean up the surfaces. I'm not sure that those chamfers are going to be enough and in any case the back side of it I'm going to possibly shape a bit differently anyway. I'm, I'm thinking of making a T shape here so that I've only got the full width or rather length of tube where it's going to go behind the finger to, to rest against and the bit where it's coming on around the tube as the clip doesn't need to be that wide so I'm going to experiment with reducing that a bit. Um, so when I've cleaned it up and shaped that I'll come back to the video. I'm actually going to show you how I'm working this out. I've put it back on my dummy flute tube and I'm just going to hold it against my finger and as you can see you only need so much of it for your finger to rest against and about two-fifths of it under the bottom isn't going to come in contact with your finger anyway so I'm just going to mark Mark it here and see, yeah, you see that's plenty for my finger, if you can see that mark. Um, don't need it to come any further underneath than that. So I'm going to cut away some of it above that line, like this. Just leave enough to make a good clip, but reducing the amount of plastic that's there. So I've marked on the um, the line I want to cut it off using the uh, the angle ruler again. And now, uh, if you remember, this is 30 millimeters, three centimeters wide. I'm just going to mark on it about one and two centimeters. So I'm going to leave a tongue in the middle that's one centimeter wide. So that's my mark. And uh, I'm just going to do rough lines like this. So I think, I hope that's going to be enough to complete the clip strongly enough. Um, I might saw these just, just a little bit outside these, maybe leave that a little bit more than a centimetre. So what I'm now going to do, put it in the vise. I'm going to, so yeah, I'm just going to go just outside those lines. And I'm going to saw down to the cross line. And the same here. Oops. So that's sawn. 
to where I want it. And then again, I'm going to go this way, just sort of along that line into the angle. That's one piece away. Not quite level in the vise. I'm just going to drop that a little. So I get the saw line where I want it. Oops. Okay. And. There we are, that's that one away. So now I've got my T-clip. I'm just gonna clean that up a little, deburr it with a file, just roughly for the moment. And let's see whether I've messed this up completely, whether it's still gonna clip onto my substitute tube. That's okay. So what I'm going to do now, away from the camera, is I'm going to shape this. I am actually going, because I know that's not, that chamfer at the top side is not going to be enough to clear where the C key comes down onto the C-sharp chimney, which is the one most likely to be interfered with. So I'm going to file that away to be a tangent to the tube, something like that line I've just marked on it there. So I'm going to do that off with a file, uh, again with it clamped in the jaws of the vise. Um, so that will get the, the requisite clearance there and I'm just going to get rid of all these sharp corners and, and tidy it all up with the file. Uh, so that's the next step. So I've mounted the, um, the workpiece in the vise with just the, the points here of where it was sawn off level with the jaws of the vise and uh, clamped it in quite nice and hard and again I can use the surface of the vise jaws as my guideline for filing it off flat across at the angle that I want. Right so now I've filed the top edge off to the angle I wanted it and I've just reversed the piece in the vise and lined up the bottom edge of the tongue so that it's point checking with the file is again level with the vice jaws and I'm just going to file that off to, to a similar angle not quite as, as tangential, tangential a one as I did the top edge but this shouldn't be in a position where it's going to interfere with any keys but I just want it to be nice and tidy um, and sort of reasonably attractive I might actually file a slight curve on this um, which I can finish freehand. I just want to get the, the rough thing. And if you do it in the vice jaws, you make sure you stay parallel to the uh, length of the of the tube, the long axis of your section of tube. So that's uh, that's almost done to where I want it roughed anyway. Um, really should have some. Uh, jaw protectors on the top of, on the vise here. I haven't got any, so uh, just trying not to knacker it completely. There we are. So that's almost to how I want it. I'm just just going to freehand that into a nice tapered curve. That's. Um, And just take the sharp corner off it because we don't need that. Get that back edge parallel. So all of this I'll finish off by hand afterwards. That's what the the top edge now looks like, and uh, this edge. So going back to my dummy tube, we're still clipping on there quite nice and firmly, and it looks like that. And it will go against my forefinger 
like that and it's just wide enough it doesn't need to be any wider than that the first prototype I made was it was a bit a bit too long um, that will do so that's the um, the shape made out now it's just a case of finishing it which I will do with the files. Uh, I've got a, a smaller half round one here but it's the same grade of file. I'll finish my shaping with those two files and then um, I'll rub it down first with a, a medium sandpaper um, and I'll, I'll file the, the, the sharp edges away as well just make it all nice and, and smooth um, and round the corners and everything so there's nothing to damage the flute or catch your fingers and um, so I'll do that with the files, then I'll sand it and then finish it with some finer wet and dry papers to a, 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 a fairly nice surface finish. Um, and then we'll see about lining it and sizing it onto the flute. Because obviously lining inside it will, will take up some of the space and probably make it a little bit too tight. And we'll have to expand the clip slightly. So, here we are again. I've um, now done all the tidying up filing. I've just rounded off all the corners and all the edges, including the interior ones, with the file. Just by gently going around at a couple of different angles, each end with the file, and on the tongue here as well. And I've rounded the corners of the tongue. And I've rounded the corners here and here. So everything's nice and rounded now. Uh, that's more or less done and, and uh, there as well on the uh, corners here by the tongue. So inside and out. So that's all just slightly rounded off with the file. All done by eye and freehand. And um, the next thing is to tidy that up a bit better by using some sandpaper. So here we go again. Um, I've now sanded it um, all surfaces and all the corners and edges and so on with uh, first thing was 180 grit sandpaper and then I've done it with uh, I think it was 420 um, wet and dry uh, dry, use dry, and then a, a very fine wet and dry, not quite the scrap I got, I can't see the number on it, but I think it's probably 800, might be a thousand grit. Uh, you could go on doing that, fine refinery, you could use it wet, and there was some of the, you know, the motor finish ones that you can use, and you can get quite a, a gloss on this very hard PVC, um, and if you've got a buffing wheel, you, you can buff it on that, and, it, and it'll come up really shiny, uh, look, almost like grainless ivory or, or certainly like um, slightly off-white porcelain. It's really quite attractive if you get that far with it. I don't have a buffing wheel so I don't have that option but, but that could be done. But in terms of function this is the plastic bit finished as far as I'm going to go with it so you could finish it more fancily um, but as you'll see it's still clipping nicely on to my dummy tube and uh, there's the angle at the top so what I'm going to do now is wash it to make sure there's no sandy dust anywhere and then I'm going to just try clipping it onto an actual flute so I have washed uh, the workpiece the, the clip with uh, washing up the grit in hot water and my hands just to make sure that I'm not bringing any gritty sandpapery dust with me to the flute um, and I'm just going to try fitting on so this, this is just a, an ordinary student flute um, and here's the, the C sharp key um, and obviously your, your finger when you're holding the flute goes roughly alongside the C sharp key or C key rather of the C sharp hole so I'm going to line that up roughly where I think I want it and I'm just going to clip it on and okay so we've got to mind that the back tab doesn't interfere with the kicker of that key um, which it just doesn't. I, if it did, I could just shorten it very slightly to make sure it didn't get in the way. Um, we'll see if it's in the right place. And as you can see, 
the chamfer I put on it. It's actually up against the town hall chimney, but it doesn't interfere with the action of the key. It's lower than the town hall chimney and nothing gets in the way of the key. So, is that in the right place? No, it just needs to go a little up tube. Actually, that is just clear of the kicker anyway. Uh, it, it's touching the tone hole chimney on the top side and it's just clear of the kicker, but I might just take a, a millimetre or so off that uh, to make sure. Um, and it's actually quite a nice clip on the, uh, quite a nice tight fit on the flute as it is. Okay, that's, where do I want it for playing position? down tube a little so that's where if I just put the flute together so we've got proper feel of it and um, okay so if I go to play there, there it is on the flute it's not lined as yet but if I go the playing position yeah a couple of mil down the tube my fingers on in playing position and I'll bring the camera from the other side of the room. That, that, that's, that's comfy for me and I'm against the, the rest. So if I bring the camera, uh, which way? Around here, you can see where the rest is. Just neatly behind my finger, it's, an audience member wouldn't see that. It's pretty unobtrusive. So there it is, that side, and, oops, <laughs> and upside down, sorry about this, I hope it's not making anybody feel seasick, uh, just try and bring it from different angles. So there it is, with my finger against it. Okay, so that, that seems to be doing the job, I'm quite pleased with that, and there's certainly less of it than there was of the first one. Um, so you could actually just use it like that, but I personally would, would be worried about it scratching the foot and although it's a reasonably snug fit it could slide in use especially if things get hot and sweaty so i'm inclined to put a soft lining in it one could also glue on uh, um, some sort of padding on the exterior if you wanted to if if you find hardness a problem i personally i wouldn't choose to do that but you could easily glue on get some thicker leather or and, and you could also file a hollow in this to suit your finger if you wanted to if it was too thick you could file it away um, or you could glue on some leather or you could glue on um, some neoprene foam or something something of that type um, to cushion the exterior if you wanted to but I'm definitely going to look at cushioning the interior partly because it will give it a better grip on the flute tube here we are again um, so I've got a choice for lining my finger um, rest clip. I can either, as I did with prototype one, use this very thin uh, leather. It's from an, an old wallet, Spanish leather from a, an old wallet. Um, and we decided on the first prototype that we'd use the back side, the, um, not, not the exterior skin side, but the back side of the leather against the flute because it, um, I'm just grabbing this flute head. It was, it gripped better on the tube. It was less likely to, it doesn't slip as much as the outer skin side does. We thought, well, the, we, we don't want the, uh, the, the finger rest to slip. We want it as steady as possible. So we glued the skin side to the, the clip and the, um, the textured, inner side of the leather went against the flute. Um, that's my first option. The other option is I've got this, uh, it's called play foam or you know, create, uh, creative foam. It's, it's neoprene closed cell foam. It comes in various colors. And um, it's nominally all the same thickness, but some of this is thicker than others. And, and looking at it, I think this uh, green happens to be the thinnest. Uh, I'm just wondering how that's gonna be. So I'm just gonna cut a, a sample it's wide enough to be a potential real piece off. So I'm just cutting a sample off that. And I'm just going to try, well, let's see how that is on the flute 
Mm. It grips better than the shiny side of the leather, but not as well as the back side of the leather. And it's, you know, it's slightly thicker than the leather, but it would compress more than the leather. So I'm just wondering what that's going to feel like. So I'm going to try clipping that on the flute. Now this is going to be too tight on the flute body really, but I'm just going to try it because I want to see how it feels. Well, that goes on quite well actually. And it holds, it doesn't slip. Okay, it's probably less durable than leather, but you can always take it off and put a new piece on. Um, so I think I'm going to try the neoprene foam on this. And that looks like it might do really quite a nice job. Um, and when you take these off the flute, you've got to be careful not to do anything to the mechanism. It sort of twists off. There we are. Um, I'm going to glue in a piece of neoprene foam on this. I'll probably have to just slightly slacken the curve of the um, the clip as well, which you do by using a, a paint stripper hot air gun um, to warm it up until it becomes just slightly flexible and then you, you can bend it open or close. if you went too far you can warm it again and bend it tighter preferably around a forming tube you just have to find a slightly smaller bit of tube to to pinch it a bit tighter again to get it to a nice clipping on tension that's not too hard to put on or take off but that is going to hold where you want it um, if I have to do that, I'll add that to the video. But now I'm going to go and glue in my piece of neoprene foam. So I've just applied some contact adhesive to the interior of the clip and to one side of the neoprene. Uh, this is an ordinary contact adhesive, the, the same stuff your flute tech would use, or your woodwind tech rather, <laughs> would use for applying a cork lapping to a, a clarinet or oboe or wooden flute tenon. Um, so just that's been applied. I'll just let that go off. Go and clean my fingers while it goes off. Okay, so I've washed my hands, so hopefully I won't get stuck to any of the contact adhesive. I'm just going to use my uh, my handy piece of almost flute size tube to press the uh, the lining into the clip, just to make sure it really sort of beds down neatly all around. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to sort of hold it around the clip, around the uh, the tube, and then I'm literally going to clip ah that's torn it <laughs> literally damn i'm going to persist with that I'll leave that i'll just glue another piece onto the tongue where the tongue's torn it okay live and learn technique wasn't ideal there but i just as you can see that's made it go on nice and tight there but it, it's torn here um perhaps should have done it if I'd put the tongue on first it would have would have been all right but I'm going to trim that and I'll, I'll just put some more glue on, and I'll glue on another separate piece to the um to the tongue of the clip and while I'm waiting for it to cure I'm going to you can see the excess sticking out there I'm going to use a, a razor blade and just neatly trim away the excess around the edges of my finger rest and uh, doing it while it's on the metal tube makes it easier obviously don't do this with it on the flute um, you can do it freehand thinking about doing things freehand um, everything I've used in making this so far has just been a simple hand tool um, if you don't have a vice you can still do it. Advice is not essential. You need the saw and the files, but the vice just makes things easier and, and that helps act as a guide and things like that. It's not an essential tool um, if you don't have access to, to one. Um, but uh, you can do all the rest of it perfectly well freehand. Um, uh, obviously, it depends on how handy you are and how fussy you are as to um, how good a finish you want to get. So I've trimmed that away with the razor blade. Now I'm going to have to do the, the rescue job on my mistake with the tongue. So I've pulled, the, pulled it off the clip and you can see what happened. I think if I'd gone 
that way onto it rather than that way onto it I wouldn't have done that and it would have been all right but um, I'm just going to add that's actually still got plenty of um, ready to, to apply I had a little phone memory problem at the end of that last bit. Um, I was just saying if the contact adhesive was ready to apply. So I've um, stuck a bit on there. And obviously there's a, there's a little gap there where it tore. This is not quite as neat as one might ideally have hoped. Um, but I've done that and trimmed that with the razor blade as well. Uh, there's another little tear in it there. But it's all quite adequate to cushion it on the flute. How durable this is going to prove, I don't know. You know, we sort of clipping it on and off the flute um, but it wouldn't really matter because if it gives way you can just get it off clean off the glue residue and, and glue on a piece of leather so uh, that might be the long-term solution but this is um, done now all trim's already got that basically so you could shine it up more but that essentially is a finished usable um, finger rest so I'm just going to clip it on where and I'd um, shortened the tongue there, as I said I would. I'm just going to clip it on to the flute and see whether I don't think I need to um, adjust the clip particularly. It's not too tight, so I'm just twisting it around to come up against the C-sharp tone hole. And that's a, it is just lifting off a little. Um, where where it's a little too tight over the, the padding but it doesn't move at all easily it's not going to go slip sliding anywhere um, and, and I think that will just give with time a little bit so I'm actually, I'm actually not going to heat it and and bend it open because I think think it's all right so let's just see if I put it in the right place no, I just wanted a couple of millimeters down the tube so it's not awfully easy to push it along tube so which, which means that the the padding is doing the job I wanted so I'm just trying to show close up to the camera how it looks so that's the the back side the player side of it with the tongue of the clip pointing up towards the C sharp uh, the C key kicker rather and then uh, that's it going around the flute on the other end and it's there roughly halfway along its length just nuzzling up to the C-sharp tone hole chimney, but well out of the way of anything. Uh, when the key closes, it's not going to upset anything. And... Actually, for you of that, I want to push that another couple of mil down the tube. It might actually be easier just to take it off. Now, if I hold the flute that way, I can just carefully pull it off without touching the mechanism at all. I'm just going to move it a tiny little bit down tube. I may have gone too far there and I've got it too far round. But you get used to this. I think if you start off with it that way and ease the tongue on, just press it on and there we go. So. That's better. It doesn't feel like I'm going. My finger's going to come off the the bottom end of it on the underside. Um, I don't know if you can see there. Uh, of course, I'm not in plain posture like that, but that's the idea. And uh, there you go. Homemade finger rest for making the tube fatter so that your finger's not tucked as far in under the tube uh, to relieve angle of finger and stress and so on. All nice and secure, it's not going to slide anywhere. Um, I do suspect that longer term you're likely to get gunge in, in the lining and it could scratch the um, the surface of, of your flute. But I mean, again, if, if you suspected the lining was getting gungy, you'd, you'd change it, you'd get a new one. But try to keep it clean. The sensible thing to do would be when you take this off the flute to put it into a, a snap seal bag or you know, something sealed where it's not going to get any dust and grime in with it that, that could get into the uh, into this and basically turn it into an abrasive. Um, 
So there we are. And then take it off again. Hold the flute by the uh, where there's no mechanism, and I think I'm finding if I just pull on the top corner, whoop, off it flew. There we are. And put it on. You could even mark where you want it against the tone hole to suit your hand. Uh, easily make a slightly longer one if you want, if if you found that necessary. So just uh, put it against the 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 tongue there against the tone hole, and push the clip on around the flute. And make sure it's snug. And check the position. And so if you want to slide it, it's not going to slide very well. Go back to holding it by the uh, the, so the top socket and pull it off like that. There we go. Prototype Mark II, Gems, Finger Rest.